All right, so the next uh, focus area we're going to talk about is this access control authentication and uh, authorization. And first and foremost is we're actually going to talk through what some of the definitions are on each one of these. And it'll be important because uh, we're going to start to um, identify, you know, how do we actually go through the process of being able to authenticate to a system and then what methods are put in place in order to either allow somebody in or prevent somebody from accessing through a, uh, access control, right? We'll talk about kind of the details of that and how it winds up playing into uh, the things we're talking about here. Um, I actually have a bigger section on that in the cryptography piece. Yeah, so, um, but what what we can talk about is, you know, the process, um, because as we move forward, there's actually a very robust section in there on cryptography uh, for PKI. Okay, so most people are probably familiar with the, the concept of having a couple of different methods of access control. Uh, the ones that uh, you should be automatically familiar with is this concept of identification versus, you know, authentication to a system, right? And identification is just trying to state, hey, I am person X, okay? Uh, this is who I am. Well, how do you prove that, right? And this is kind of where the authentication piece comes in because now you're kind of verifying that you are who you say you are. So there's a couple of different ways in which we can do that. Um, you can either have something that you know, right? Uh, so what would be an example of something that we know as far as from an authentication standpoint? Mm -hmm. All right, so a PIN number, password, you know, something that needs to be, you know, memorized in order to do that. Uh, something you have, so um, on smart card, PKI, uh, being able to go through that process. Maybe you have a, you know, uh, a key fob or something like that that goes in that you have access to and um, or uh, lastly uh, something that you are right so from a uh, standpoint what would be some examples of that okay yeah the, uh, so anything where you have a um, uh, ability to be able to prove yourself through your you know own individual characteristics and uh, be able to do that as well there's, other, so there's also some other types of technologies that are currently in development um, where based on your job, like what it is that you do, you know, being able to prove out who that is um, or somewhere that you are. But both of those are a little bit more prone to spoofing and some, you know, modification. Uh, so they're still kind of work in development right now. So uh, let's start with a little bit of a practical exercise. So out of the forms of authentication that we talked about already, which one would this be? Okay, so this is something that you have, makes sense, right? Okay, how about this one? All right, something that you are. And then uh, a couple of different things to keep in mind when we're talking about authentication is the different methods of authentication uh, can be helped or aided by having, you know, maybe more than one. So in the case for a single factor where maybe you're logging in just to your Gmail account and you're just using a password, you know, the single factor authentication um, is only as strong as somebody not knowing your password. If they're able to go through and do a brute force attack or if they're able to collect information about you that lends itself to finding out your password, that could be at risk. So what winds up happening is you could have what's called multi-factor authentication where you go through and now you have multiple methods of being able to identify who you are. Okay, And uh, this could be, you know, username, tokens, and so forth uh, that most people are familiar with. And then finally, we have this concept of mutual authentication where you essentially authenticate to a server and the ser server authenticates back to you. So both users are, have an authentication mechanism going on. All right, so uh, between our single factor and multi-factor authentication, um, what would this be an example of, this first one?
Very good. So recognizing that just because you provide multiple methods of authentication, if they're not in the different classification, it's still only a single factor authentication. You know, now in this particular case, this would be a, a pretty strong one because it is, it is your, you know, um, your biometrics, which is very hard to be able to modify. Okay, but nonetheless, it's still single factor. How about this one? Yeah, so multi-factor authentication on that one. So I know these are mostly relatively easy examples, but it just reinforces that when you see these on the practical exercises or the simulations, that you're aware of what it is that we're dealing with.